For wheat paste glue, we'll use one third cup wheat flour, one tablespoon of sugar, and one cup of water. Take the dry ingredients, the flour and the sugar, and mix them together well. Then slowly add water and stir to keep the mixture nice and smooth. Try to get rid of any lumps. Continue adding water until you've put in the full cup. Next, we'll be putting this in the microwave for about two minutes on high until the mixture starts to thicken and become translucent. Let it cool to room temperature and then to thin it, add hot water and stir until it's in the consistency that you would like it to be. Here I'm trying to get it smooth but not too runny. Next we'll be making cornstarch glue. This is made from one tablespoon of cornstarch and one cup of water. We're going to take the cornstarch and add it to a bowl and then slowly add water and stir it in until it's smooth. And add a little more water and keep stirring until all the water is in. We're going to place the mixture in the microwave oven for about four minutes and cook it. You can see it boiling. And we want to cook it until it is turning clear and starting to gel. And here is the finished product. It can be stored in a refrigerator. And finally, we're going to be making milk glue. Milk glue is also known as casein glue because casein is the protein found in milk. We'll need four tablespoons of vinegar and one cup of milk. Add the vinegar to the milk and stir it in. Then let it sit for five minutes. I'm using canned milk, which is evaporated milk, but you can use any. I'm using cheesecloth as the material that I'm going to pour it through to strain it. So I've made a depression in the cheesecloth, put it in a bowl, and I'm pouring the milk mixture in. You can see how thick it is. And I am squeezing out the extra liquid, which is known as whey. Let it drain as much as possible. And give it a final squeeze to get out as much of that liquid as you can. We're going to be taking the milk solids that have formed, the casein, also known as curds, and we are going to be adding to those two teaspoons of baking soda and some water to thin it. So I'm going to stir in the baking soda and water. The baking soda will neutralize the acid from the vinegar and make the mixture more neutral. If you want to, you can leave it at this stage and that would make a nice thick paste. But I'm going to go ahead and add some more water and continue mixing to make it smoother and a little bit more like white glue. I'm going to glue some wood together with it, some wood blocks, just to show how strong it is. And as a bonus, you can take that milk glue and make your own paint. So paint is basically glue with pigment added. So as a pigment or coloring, I'm going to use red iron oxide, also known as rust, and I'm going to mix that into the glue. And I'm going to then be able to use that as paint and it will work on paper or wood. Here I am painting the wooden blocks that I made before. And it's a very long-lasting, durable paint. 